Timing is the most crucial factor when you want to get over 400% of returns on investment in Yam family. In this video, I've broken this timing process into seven crucial points that you must take note of from even before the yam is planted to the storage of the yams. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on any of these points, especially point six and number seven. I want you to get a pen and a paper because you will need them to take down some notes. Before we delve into these seven points, I want to discuss something very crucial, which forms the foundation and the basis of our discussion today. It is the life cycle of yam. I'm going to be taking twice yam as a case study for what we are going to do today. I want us to take a look at this diagram. Now, this white yam takes about six to nine months from germination all through to the first and the second harvest. So it is important we look at the stages. Stage one is the stage of germination. It takes about a month. That is followed by the vegetative or the foliar stage. This is a very, very crucial stage because it is the stage where you have formation of beautiful leaves, the vines are luscious as are then. This stage of vegetation or foliar formation takes about two months. This third stage, which is the stage of tuba formation, is a very, very crucial stage because it is that stage where the tuba actually increases in size. The fourth stage is actually the stage of senescence. It starts from around the fifth month down through to the end of the life of the yam. But what we must understand about this stage, this is the most critical stage if you are going to maximize your profit. This timing is very key. So I would like you to keep this diagram in mind because as we are going to be explaining the timing of this viral process here, I will be referring to this same diagram. Number one point is timing of the land preparation or planting of the year. This process is actually divided into two. Two because there are early planters and late planters or there are situations whereby you have to, you can plant early and you can plant late. I'll tell you the importance of these two categories. I do both of them. Now, the reason why I do both because I harness the opportunities in both. The first one is the early planters and usually starts from around November all through to February. Now, let me tell you the advantage of planting early around this time I've just mentioned, depending on the location where you are. For me, I like to plant around from January down through to February. The reason is very simple. I will be able to get my yam out on time, six months time, when people will really, really need new yam. By so doing, I'll be able to maximize profit. You can see we're already getting to the point. Planting early is very, very key. So there are also the late planters that start to plant around April or late April all through to May. Now this one, if you calculate six months time, is going to come out around towards the end of the year. I also do so because I get yams this way all through the year and I can save this set of yams for when the yams are very, very expensive. In order to be able to key in into this timing, what I do is to start making my heaps. If I'm planting in the ground or I'm planting in the soil, directly into the soil, I'm going to start making my heap as at when the rain just finished in that year. And this is usually around November where the, the soil is still soft. So it enables my workers to actually make very good heap. Between November and December, in my area, the ground is still soft. I can make my heaps. You need to follow me because these methods are methods that have been working for me. So what I do after making my heap, I will just plant my yams. Because one thing is very key. You must plant yams that have broken dormancy. Don't even try to put any yam that has not broken Thomas into the soil. You may end up losing, and that will be bringing down your return on investment. Our two point is the timing of the mulching. Mulching is an agro practice that is very important when we are talking about yam farming. It is important you mulch because as at this period of early planting, the sun is usually mulched. And because of this, you will need to use materials like dried banana leaves or grass to mulch properly and when you are mulching make sure you put a weight on top of it so that wind will not blow it off for the yam that you have planted to be exposed still on the issue of mulching of yams that you planted early there's one very important point you must take note of there is need for it to germinate so when the rain starts around that earlier part of the year you might need to remove the mulch around maybe march april when the rain has started falling so that you can get germination of this year. For those who will plant around May or late April down, which is the late planting, I want to assure you that you don't have any problem with mulching. You can as well just stop 
the mulching or don't mulch because the rain would have started so that the yam can easily germinate. Number three, the timing of the staking of your yam. Now, I want you to understand something. Yams are climbers and you have to stake. This is a very, very crucial stage. But I want to quickly point out something. If you are staking, take note, this is the practice that I've been working for me. I normally use very long bamboo of up to about 15 feet above the ground. And it's usually around two feet deep into the ground. Now, that is the point I'm going to be talking about, the two feet into the ground. The reason is because I want the stake to be very, very strong because it's going to carry a whole lot of vine. And of course, it is important that it remains strong. Now, for you to achieve this, your staking must be done when your ground is still soft. So when your ground is still soft, just put your stake and wait for even the germination to occur. So the longer the stake, the bigger your tubers. The longer your stake, the better production. Your tubers will be larger. For me, I normally like putting my stake before even the yams start to germinate or when they are just germinating. They have not started climbing. Most people just leave and they stake when the yams are already falling down, the vines are growing, vines are already falling down. That will stress your vine. And once that stresses the vine, productivity is reduced. All you need to do is stake on time. When the vine comes out, it will just go. You cannot eventually direct it to the stake that is already existing. That way, there will be no stress on the vine. And before you know it, your vines have gotten to the top. It does not even stop them because they need that time to grow. But sometimes, when you now begin to allow them to crawl on the ground, sometimes they tangle on even things. For you to untangle and all that, you end up breaking the edges. And that will take another time for it to regerminate again. You are losing time. Apart from you losing time and the yam losing time to grow, there's some, something else you must consider. If you allow this vice to tangle and without following the stake on time, it will increase your labor cost because you have to call people to help you on tango and it will be wasting your own personal time and the time of the growing vine. Number four is the timing of your fertilization. The timing of fertilization is very, very crucial. Let's go back to the graph. I normally like fertilizing at the end of stage one and at the beginning of stage three. That way it will help the vegetative stage so that the leaves can grow very, very well because the more leaves, the more the size of the tuber. Then the next stage is the stage of tuber formation. That's where I will fertilize at the beginning of the tuber formation period. That time, enough food for larger tubers to be formed. Number five point is the timing of the weeding. Why do we weed? We weed because we want to remove competitors, things that compete against the yaps from really, really doing very well. And that is why we weed. I have a way I time my weeding. Ideally, if you are farming yam, on hip or mounds, you normally we wait three times before the harvest. The first one is after the first month when the wheat are just coming up. It's, it's about to enter the second stage. So after the first stage, you weed. Then the next thing is that after the second stage also, you weed. The way I do it, after the third stage, I also weed. These three would have helped me both for the vegetative period the tuber formation period I will also help me with the seed yam formation period. But if you are farming yam in bags, it's a different ball game entirely. Well, the cost of weeding is relatively reduced. For example, like you see some of our yams in bags, we can just, of course, remove like this. You just hand pick like this. It's not very difficult. Although these ones are already dried up, we just for us to do the harvesting. Number six, the timing for the milking or the first harvest. I can assure you this is a very crucial point. And this point is where a lot of people miss it, where they just get it all wrong. And it is the part that will give you the most amount of returns on investment. I want us to go back to the graph because this point is a very crucial point. If you look at the, the graph, there's a play to phase between the fifth month and the sixth month. That is where the size of the tuber gets to the highest. 
it does not actually grow more than that. Even if you leave it for another two, three months, it will never grow more than that. All that is happening around this fifth to sixth month is just maturation. So what do you do? At this point, this is where you must milk. Because if you must get your very gigantic CDM, which is a win-win situation for you, this is the best time. Now look at what I do. Ideally, five to six months, the leaf will start to turn yellow. Ali, you will see one or two leaves already turning yellow, especially the lower ones, like you can see here. The lower ones already turning yellow. That is the right point for you to cut the head of your tuba, uh, of your yam, remove the tuba, or you leave it whatever um, method you want to use. Then you allow seed yam to develop. Now I want you to understand something very very critical. Your seed yam development depends on the greenness of the leaves. The greener it is from the fifth month, the better. So don't leave there to start getting yellow. What you what I normally do at the fifth month, I carry my my instrument and I harvest and I check the tuba. I'll show you what I mean by that. Then after that, if I see that I'm not so satisfied, I leave for another two weeks, not beyond that. Because anything beyond that, your leaves will start falling off. And when your leaves starts falling off, your seed yam will not be large. I just harvested this one today, or rather I just did my first harvesting, first milking. It's, a, it's just five months. So I have done the milking because if, if, you, if you see the uh, ground is very, very uh, red and it, it shows that I've just harvested. But let me show you the tubers. So these were some of my yams that we harvested today, that I just harvested from that place. Now look at the tuba. As at five months, they are well developed. But there's something I want to show you uniquely. This is, where, this is how you know that your yam is already fully developed. It can never develop more than this. It is the tip that is the key, that is very important. For you to know that your yam is ready, you'll see a brownish tip, more like the, the stop point. It's like the a scarred navel, so, so to speak. Now, this tip has a, a, a unique color, light yellow. That is when you will know that your yam is already developed. Now, if as at the fifth month, I uproot one of the yams and I discover that the tip is already yellow like this. I am done. There's, there's no way this yam can increase more than this. The only way I will leave the yam a little bit for another two weeks to get to five months and two weeks is if here is white. I see everything here is white, but immediately it becomes light yellow. It's not going to make any difference again in size. The next thing that it will, it will, it will move to, the next color it will move to will be brown. Let me just give you an example of something, something like this. So something like this, you see, this one is, already, is fully brown. So this one was even long overdue. If you can even see the yam, some of the parts were already budging to try to form seed yams and all that. If you can see now, this place, they will easily break dormancy because the yam was well, well overdue. That's why I wanted to show us. Okay, this is the yam I harvested about three weeks ago when it was exactly five months. You can see the stage of senescence. The leaves are now getting more yellow, but this is close to about, you know, a month now, three weeks to a month. Let me show us the two bars that is forming inside the ground. I took the liberty of digging it out so that we'll see. You can see this the huge tuba. I'm careful so that I will not detach the root that is anchoring it. You can see the tuba. This is where I cut it. You can see the tuba already for me. You see this white tuba. In fact, the tuba is almost getting close to uh, full maturity because some parts are already having this dark uh, spot at the, at the uh, more like the navel. Now look at the this other new bulb that is for me. This is very huge. So in about one more time, this one will be fully matured when the whole vine would have fully dried. So I'm going to have to cover back. This is what I am telling us, that when we milk on time, we are going to have very, very large seed yams. So one more thing, let me show you the already harvested seed yam that I harvested. This is a particular seed yam, was harvested today, but we milked it about two and a half months ago, after we have removed the tubers. The tubers that we removed, some of them were far larger than this one. This one is about close to two feet, if not up to. Of course, this one is a very large tube. You can imagine after removing something like this, you now have something like this. 
and this is even a smaller one. These are and these are the most powerful set of CDR. For those who are farmers, they know quite well. You see, if you can see, it has spots where it's going to germinate. With this one, I will not just plant this one. This one is rather big. I will share it into two. And each portion will still give me one, one tuba in the long run. This one, I will just put only one. Like This one will give me fantastic tuba. Sometimes the advantage of this is that they give multiple tubers that are very big. So, now let's do the analysis. Just a brief analysis. For you to know that over 400% return on investment is what we are talking about here. Imagine that I planted something like this. Maybe not even up to this one. I got this one first harvest. If I'm going to sell this yam, it's not going to be less than 2,000 naira, at least in our currency. Now, imagine that I bought this for like 500 or 400 naira, or sometimes 300 naira. Then I've sold this one for about 1,000 naira, I mean 2,000 naira, which is three times the price of this one, already 300%, plus or minus cost and all that. Then this one, there's no way this CDM can be less than 500 Naira. Imagine getting something eventually of 2,500 from something you bought for 300 Naira. And imagine that you have it. And this CDM is at no cost. You just cut the head, leave it for some other, because you understood the timing and the appropriate way of doing it. Number seven, timing of storage. This is very critical because a lot of tubers of yams, seed yams can get spoiled if not properly stored and the farmer can run at a very, very big loss. But your, your ability to be able to store will also enhance your returns on investment. And here are some of the vital tips I use. First of all, it depends on when you planted. If you planted early, kudos, because you are going to get your tubers out where when yam is very very expensive so the majority of your tubers my advice is this and this is what i do is to sell and take them to the market your your um, profit will be very very high because at this point a lot of persons don't even have yams in the market that is one point so you have little to stop now what i normally do when i have shipped my yams many of them to the market the leftover I stop, but there might be need to store temporarily. And this is what I want to share with us. The key thing is that when you have harvested, store in a cool, dry, airy place. That is your best bet. And I want to show us what I mean by that. Now, this is an area where I want to construct my barn. You can see these live woods. They are all in tandem. One, two, three, four, and all that. So, what I intend to do is to temporarily store here because it's shady. To also make it shady, I'm going to construct something and I'm going to put palm fronts here so that this place will be cool. Another thing you can do is to store under plantain or banana uh, plants if you have. I'll show us some of the CDMs that I stored there. Now, this is what I normally like to do. I'll take my tubers. You know the tuber has the head part and the tip part. I get a flat board that is dry. What I do is to put the head down and the tail up. I arrange them like this. This is the best way to arrange them in an airy, dry place. The rationale behind this is very simple. The head and the tail, the, head con the tail contains more water. So, um, Gravity definitely will help me and what I intend to achieve is to let this tuber shrink a little for about three weeks to one month before I finally transfer them to the band. If I transfer them to the band like this, there is a possibility because of the water content that they are going to experience rot. Rot is something very key and something you should watch out for when you are storing yams. It's, very, very, it's a very, very devastating thing. I have lost a lot of yams to rot, so I'm very, very careful. So this is what you do, you just arrange them all. And once you arrange them all, you are good to go. So these are some of my seed yams I'm going to use to plant in the next season. What I did was after harvesting them, I just put them like this, with their head down in a very cool place, in a shady place. After now, I'm going to transfer them to the barn where they are going to stay for, for some time and break dormancy from there. 
I will now start planting them. So this is how I temporarily store my yams under a shady plate. Now that we have temporarily stored, there is need for us to move to the barn. The barn is one of the best traditional way of storing yams. There are many other methods, but my preferred is the barn because it affords me of the opportunity of having them well aerated and in a cool, dry place. You can actually store yams up to about three or four months or even six months in the barn. To learn how to construct the barn, I want you to watch this our next video because it's very informative in construction. Thank you.